उड़ीसा साहित्य के ये महान संतान एक साधारण परिवार में पिता सूर्यमणि महांती और माता दुर्गा देवी के नवे संतान के रूप में सन 1914 अप्रैल 20 तारीख को पैदा हुए थे उनकी जन्म मिट्टी नागबाली गांव नदी किनारे बसने वाले किसी भी हरे भरे गांव से कम न थी वह घर जहां उनका जन्म हुआ आज भी सिडुआ नदी के किनारे है सिडुआ नदी जिसे सात मील ऊपर की ओर कटक के लोग काटजोड़ी कहते हैं जीवन के पहले आठ वर्ष गोपीनाथ ने यहीं बिताए बचपन के दिन चिंता मुक्त थे सुबह सुबह मां के साथ खुशी से नदी में नहाने जाते पानी में मित्रों के साथ खूब खेलते कभी कभी शाम को उसी के किनारे बैठे गाना भी गाते नागवाली गांव में बीता उनका बचपन उनकी जिंदगी में एक गहरा छाप छोड़ गया तो वही गांव वही माहौल वही लोग उस जीवन को वो जैसे देखते आ रहे थे तथा उनके जीवन के टेढ़े मेढ़े रास्ते उनका पसंद नापसंद वो देख पाते थे अपनी रचना में आठ साल की उम्र में उन्हें अपने पिता के साथ नागवाली छोड़कर दूर सोनपुर जाना पड़ा सोनपुर के बाद कुछ दिन पटना हाई स्कूल में बिताकर गोपीनाथ कटक के रेवेंशो कॉलेज में विद्यार्थी बने रेवेंशो कॉलेज में पढ़ते समय और अपने बड़े भाई कानूचरण के घर में रहते वक्त साहित्य के प्रति उनका गहरा अनुराग हुआ उनके भाई उड़ीसा के जाने माने लेखक के रूप में प्रतिष्ठित थे और उनके घर में बहुत से साहित्यिकों का आना जाना था रेवेंशो कॉलेज में एक अध्यापक होने की उनकी आशा असफल रही एम करने के बाद भी दो साल तक उन्हें नौकरी नहीं मिली आखिर में वे सब डेप्यूटी के पद पर 1938 में सरकारी नौकरी ग्रहण कर ली इसके बाद उन्हें 31 साल रिटायरमेंट तक इसी पद में रहना पड़ा नौकरी के साथ साथ उनका आदरमणि के साथ विवाह हुआ कुछ ही दिनों में पत्नी को लेकर गोपीनाथ जंगल और पहाड़ों से घिरा आदिवासियों का इलाका कोरापुट चले गए कोरापुट के इस छोर से उस छोर घूमे कंध आदिवासियों की भाषा सीखी उनकी सरलता उनका साहस और उनकी जीवन कला को समझा आदिवासियों को अपने पास रखा और उन लोगों से इतना मिलजुल गए कि कंध लोग उन्हें अपनी जात के समझने लगे दर्ल्ड ऑफ गोपीनाथ महंती फिक्शन हैज इट्स मेजर थ्रस्ट on the tribals of orisha 
as an official he had many years in the southern districts of orissa among the khans who were one of the most primitive his major novels are paraja and amrutar santan which are structured on two of the tribes in this area the paraja and the khans whom he knew intimately now these tribes he watched not as a sociologist but as a creative writer and when he talks about the tribes and their social transformation he lifts the story from the level of an ordinary conflict between the haves and the have nots to the level of a, an intimate human concern where they become metaphysical the social is lifted up to the level of the metaphysical <laughs> वहां के पहाड़ पर्वत जंगल नदियां झरने लोगों के गीत नृत्य उनका खुशी से झूमना तथा तो आज कहलाने वाले सभ्य समाज के हाथ उनका शोषण ये सभी उनके उपन्यास के लिए कथा वस्तु बन गए कंध भाषा उन्होंने सीखी दो कंध आदमी हमारे घर रात में खाना खाते थे एक दो भाषी था जो कंध तथा उड़िया भाषा जानता था वह इन्हें समझाता और उससे पूछता कोरापुट के कंध और परजाओं के साथ कुछ साल बिताने के बाद गोपीनाथ के अंदर लेखक की कला ने जन्म लिया उनकी लिखी परजा दादी बुढ़ा और अमृतर संतान आदि उपन्यास उड़ीसा साहित्य के लिए स्वर्ण युग का संदेश लेकर आए ऑब्जर्वेशन ऑफ ट्राइबल लाइफ द कैरेक्टर्स हुम इज क्रिएटेड नाउ दैट शोज द काइंड ऑफ ऑब्जर्वेशन द डिटेल्स व्हिच ही स्टडीड about their lives their rituals their social customs and give them a kind of color a sound of the tribal areas which is exactly unique in indian fiction in fact today when people speak about magical realism his depiction of the tribal world was a kind of realism where it had all the earthiness the clarity and at the same time the complexity of tribal life that is why i believe amritar santan is one of the unusual most unusual novels in the last 50 years in indian fiction <laughs> वे नौकरी पेशा आदमी थे इसलिए दिन के नौ बजे ऑफिस चले जाते थे समय वही रात में बीच में टूर में कुछ समय मिला तो एक तो पन्ने लिख लेते बाकी तो घरे रात नौ शाम को वही नौ बजे के बाद लोगों का आना जाना खत्म होने के बाद लिखते थे उन दिनों में लकड़ी का चूल्हा था फटाफट चूल्हा लगाना मुश्किल था लकड़ी चूल्हे में लगी रहती उनका खाना गरम रखने के लिए एक या दो बजे जब उनका लिखना खत्म हो जाता था तब वे खाते से गरम है चले सब खाइबे गोटा बाजू दिटा बाजू आओ वंस डिस्क्राइबिंग द 
motivation for his writing novels on the tribal life which celebrates life and at the same time paints in very stark colors its tragedy its failures he narrated an incident about a kand whose wife had been snatched away by a tiger now this old kand shut himself up in a room for a number of days did not take any food or drink and people were afraid what is going to happen to him then one day he opened the door came out asked for a little bit of handia that is the local liquor a bd to smoke and then when questioned by gopinath babu he said that i asked myself did i really love that intimately my wife now if i had done that how is it that she left me and i am still here if i was really so attached i would have walked away from this world with her now this gopinath babu once said in an interview it gave him a deeper insight into the tribal psyche and in fact both these novels paraja and amrita santan which are his major novels are structured on this two conflicting streams on one aspect they are intense celebration of life a zest for living on the other they are totally soaked in sorrow and tragedy in other words he found the secret springs of the zest for living not in a denial of the tragedies and tribulations of life but in its acceptance and then transcending it by a deep commitment to life ऑफिस में क्लर्क ऑफिसर तथा उनके काम करने का तरीका उन्हें अपने उपन्यास दाना पानी में कड़वी सच्चाई के सामने लाने में सहायक हुआ उसके बाद उन्होंने भारतीय स्वतंत्रता के ऊपर बुंदाए पानी तथा कटक के दलित लोगों के ऊपर अपना हरिजन लिखा कोरापुट जयपुर बरगढ़ और कटक के बाद गोपीनाथ आखिर उन्नीस में भुवनेश्वर में अपने ही घर में रहने लगे उनका यह घर काफी बड़ा और शांत था और वे एक बार फिर अपने साहित्यिक कामों में लग गए about the way he got down to writing i had the opportunity of seeing him from a very close quarters on a very hot day in the afternoon with a khadi cotton towel on his shoulder sometime on the chair he would go on writing continuously he would be sweating profusely because some very often he would not put on the fan but he would not bother for that sometimes only he would just take out the towel wipe his face arm and shoulder and then again the writing would go on sometime in the dead of the night when we would wake up to go to the toilet we would see that our my father is sitting on his reading room writing is going on he had no fixed time for writing because the necessity to express himself to write that would come to him at any time and at that time he would feel restless 1951 mein unhone odisha sahitya ke sabse lambe upanyas likhne mein khud ko lagaya mati matal likhne mein unhe 10 saal lage aur usi ke liye unhe 1974 mein desh ke sabse uch puraskar ज्ञानपीठ से सम्मानित किया गया इसके पश्चात उन्होंने लोकप्रिय गोपबंधु चौधरी की जीवन कथा लिखी गोपबंधु चौधरी एक बड़े जमींदार के खूब पढ़े लिखे संतान थे उन्होंने अपनी जिंदगी गरीबों की सहायता में बिताई गोपीनाथ ने अपनी आत्मकथा स्रोतस्वती भी लिखी जो अधूरी सी रह गई वह इस अधूरी रचना से चिंतित न थे क्योंकि उनके अनुसार 
उनका हर उपन्यास अपने आप में एक आत्मकथा ही थी इन इज कलेक्शन ऑफ एशिया इज कॉल्ड द पावर ऑफ आर्ट गोपीनाथ बाबू एम्फोसाइज द रोल ऑफ ट्रेडिशन इन लिटरेचर to him the two major forces in oriya literary tradition were sarala das the writer of oriya mahabharat and fakir mohan the first great writer of modern oriya literature he himself has done lot of work on these two and now by his major contribution in the field of fiction and short stories novels he has become a part of this great literary tradition i have gone through his literature several times from my childhood till today i am going through his literature and his literature is unique he is sort of a writer who has not written about a particular class or group of people his canvas is so wide it covers the whole universe his literature is unique it is so universal that you can see your face anybody can see his face in the pages of his writings and about his uh, language it is unique it is so unique that you cannot imitate it Gopinath Bhau once said that if he had only looked outside of him at contemporary society maybe he would not have written anything because he was deeply aware of the indifference of publishers the apathy of the reading public in contemporary society and the gap between the rich heritage of our culture and the contemporary scenario he emphasized that all that he has done in his life is to look inside and write and this introspective mood this attitude to look inside and write and not to bother about the contemporary milieu and its adverse impact on the creative self this is what kept him going and this is what gave us some of the finest literature of contemporary oriya writing he loved everyone he was an ardent lover of nature so also human beings right from the his own children to the passer by from the outsiders to the eminent writers everyone was his favorite everyone used to claim to his favorite and in his love he was indiscriminate in the sense that his love was absolute natural spontaneous unlimited ye pano in pe khao ji ye pan mera aur unka ek sampark hai वे उन्नीस में अपनी बेटी को मिलने के लिए पहली बार अमेरिका गए उन्होंने वहां येलोस्टोन पार्क और ग्रैंड कैनियन जैसे कुदरती करिश्मों का खूब आनंद लिया traveling in USA along with my sister Padinda and my mother he was enjoying the things of nature thoroughly and at that time he came across this famous redwood trees of California 
which were as old as 250 to 300 years old and when they came across these redwood trees immediately he advised my sister brother in law and my mother to bow down before the trees and he himself prostrated on the ground in reverence after that he got up from the ground and asked them why they did so others were surprised then he smiled and he said look at the trees who is the human being we have got to learn a lot from these trees which have which stood this cold snow and winter for the last 200 300 years like that the human beings also must learn to have the courage and confidence to stand tall and straight in 1991 when he was leaving with his daughter in the united states i got a letter from him where he described how every month he had to take a blood transfusion because the rbc in his own blood were not living beyond 3 to 4 weeks this was a letter that hurt me to the quick because he had mentioned in it his sense of depression and his feeling what is the purpose of continuing life when one is deprived of joy this was particularly tragic because here was a person who throughout his life and throughout his entire literary career had sung about the beauty of life, living the zest for living and had said that life has a sense of nectar in it there is no death there is no finality it's a continuity and that we are sons of nectar now he himself had come to a realization as if life was not worth living and in his typically poetic and imagist style he described his condition as a pot with an unplugged hole it had to be refilled every month otherwise the pot was going to be empty in no time now this is what was particularly hurtful because here is a person who had come to a realization that even though life is a celebration there is so much of tragedy so much of misfortune that one has also to reckon with it